Good morning, everybody. So it's really cold this morning, and I've got here the Marlet M40, and I thought I'd go through some data because relevant to this motor and other motors. A few of you have pointed out to me, and I think we've got to start out by saying you need to go and have a look at VeloMotion magazine on YouTube and a couple of their videos where they do some motor tests and particularly where they're like comparing and bench testing motors on a proper dyno, which is quite useful. And they just did this one. Now I've seen them in the past, but I haven't really concentrated on them so much, to be honest. They have a completely different approach to testing bikes as I do. So they put them on a bench test, they properly dyno them to see what they're like, then they go ride them or they ride them at the same time, whatever. But at the end of the day, their approach is very much data driven. When we're talking about motors, I think it will get rid of a lot of the arguing that's taking place. Now, if you look back over the last year at all the work that I've done, you'll see that there's been a lot of uh, negative comments because people calling me a DJI hater, an Avinox hater, various things, just calling me stupid. There's all kinds of really abusive stuff, which is kind of part of the game, really. And a few of you have pointed this out to me. Like, well, actually, what you've been saying is visible in the data. And I just wanted to go through, and I'm gonna look at it now and show that. So obviously I've got to say thank you to VeloMotion. I'm gonna be showing some of their data sometimes, not their whole video, so it's pretty much fair use, I would say. I'll show you a couple of graphs that they've put together, which show the data outputs. And I wanna start with this one here, which is called power output. So it's got motor power at a cadence of 75 to 80 RPM, rider weight of 80 kilos, so that's actually less than me, I'm 90, with max assistance. So they're testing all their motors in maximum power mode, which I kind of agree with, and I do that a lot as well, like to get a real characteristical understanding of a motor. If you put it in full power mode, you can really understand what the max that motor is and what it can do, which I don't think you can do so easily in the lower power modes. You can get a good idea what an eco mode might be, but you normally can adjust them so you can vary them a bit more, whereas the max power is you can't adjust it. Along the bottom, we have rider power. So that's the amount of power that the rider puts in from their legs. And we have motor power on the left. So the amount of power that comes out of the motor at the wheel uh, on the, on the, the y-axis. So all the different motors listed here and all the testing they've done. And it's quite notable how grouped together the majority of the motors are. The Marle M40, we've got a Gobao P0101, which I've tried. I've tried all these motors. A the Shimano EP801, tried that. Specialized 3.1 S-Works, I've tried that. DJ Ovenox, tried that. Bosch CX-4, tried that. And the CX-5, I've tried that. So I've ridden all these motors. Now the latest one we've tested, which we've got here, because there's not very many of us with this motor, I'm one of them, is the Marley M40. So you can see it there on the graph. It shows that with an input power of about, if I put in max power mode of about 250, 240. So at 50 watts, you put in here 50 watts, you get out uh, about 230. 30 watts out of the motor. If you put in along the bottom here, say 200 watts, you'll get 700 watts at the wheel out. A peak output here of 780. So even DJI is actually in line with it, really, which is quite interesting. The way I've been testing bikes and sensibility to whatever it is I've been testing, we can see that what I've said in all of my tests is actually in these numbers here unbeknowing to me. So I didn't know, I didn't really pay attention to what I've said. Now, one of the key points I've said, so a lot of the influencers have been paid have said, I'm not right. If we look at this graph here, in the max power mode, uh, we can see most of the motors, you have to put in more pedal force, so more torque to get out of the motor more power. The more pressure you put on those pedals, the more power you get out. That's what you can see from these numbers here. So what this shows here, this red line, is with only 50 watts of input power, you get 600 watts of motor power. Actually, Michael from uh, VeloMotion says the same thing as I've said. You just put your foot on the pedals and that motor will just fall away. Very little pressure, just barely turns, which basically means it's cadence-based. You spin the pedals and that motor will power along really quickly. Now, if you look at the top of this curve here, the peak there, you can see that very quickly it ramps up to full power. By 110 watts, it's up at full power. And 110 watts is basically a third of my leg pressure 
shall we say, I can maintain 300 watts for a reasonable amount of minutes. I can maintain 200 watts for probably quite a long time. I can maintain 100 watts for probably hours. So this motor here, which is the DJI Avinox M1, is basically, uh, from this graph, we can clearly see that what I've been saying that's a cadence-based motor is completely true. Now you can actually feel that when you're pedaling it. What we can see here is that this mild curve is pretty much uh, one of the, as I've said, it's very progressive, very smooth, and very, it's got a, enough push compared to all the other motors out there. And you can see that because this is the Bosch one. I said it's a little bit more powerful. A thicker wave is what I actually said, a thicker wave of energy, and there it is there's a thicker wave of energy and you can see that there. So it's got a thicker wave of energy. And then I said, when it gets to the high end though, it feels about the same as the Bosch. And guess what? There we go, there's the curves there. It shows it gets about the same as the Bosch. I think this is super interesting. Real numbers confirming everything I've said. So I've read a lot of comments saying, oh, I know what I'm talking about. Kind of tiresome because I do this as a job and people think I'm just joking around. And I've had a lot of uh, manufacturers contact me to tell me that I'm doing the right thing. Go and look for yourself in the video that Fellow Motion published because I will put a link for that in the description because I think it's really important. People have asked me about the new specialized motor and, I, and it's marginally uh, more powerful than the Marlet as you put in around 150 watts. So that's interesting here. You can see that, that curve is a little bit more. This motor here is a good motor. I said it was a good motor. I said it was exciting. And I look at the data on this graph and it's exciting. It is exciting. It is one of the most powerful motors on there. Now, the other motor I've tried recently is the GoBao P101 or P100, and that's on there as well. You can see it on this uh, orange curve. And I said that that has more of a cadence feel to it as well. You just twiddle the pedals and you go, especially in the turbo mode. And there we go, there's the curve, almost matching the red line. And I called it the Asian tune. So I said, Asian motor makers, tend to prefer this type of motor tune and curve tune and here we go there's a couple of them with that and we've also got the shimano ep801 it kind of does the same thing as well but it although the shimano one is a little bit more natural so i don't quite know what they've done well it, so what about tuning then well yes you can tune the motor with the app and you can do the same with this thing and you can make those curves pretty much what you like uh, but I think there's something really interesting to point out here. With this top curve of the DJI Avinox, there's a certain characteristic that you can't tune away. So later on in the video, let's find it. Now you look at this, input output power, and you've got the different levels of support, which you can tune in the max power mode from level seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, and they've marked them all on the curve. And you can see, and this is the key point here to why I say it's a cadence-based motor, and you can even see that in the lower uh, power input levels, that there's a real steep ramp on each curve. So you, it very quickly ramps up. Only in level seven, where it's quite flatly detuned, is it a bit smoother, but it's still way more vertical than all of the other motors on there which start off in their lower power modes when they're tuned or even in the high power modes. What that tells me is an intrinsic uh, software design, an intrinsic mechanical design of the motor that causes that reaction. It's nothing more than that. It's like, so you cannot detune out of it that cadence-based feel. And in fact, when you get on the bikes and on the motors, especially on this one here, uh, you can feel the reactivity of the motor. And this is probably the fastest reacting normal motor. The race motor from Bosch is a little bit more fast reacting, but that's not really a normal motor. You don't find it very often. But a mass market aimed at everyone motor, this thing is probably the fastest I've tried. And these guys don't get into that. They don't get into the pedal reaction time. So you put your foot on the pedal and boom, how quickly does the motor react to your inputs? And this is pretty much up there with the fastest, thickest band of energy that I've tried. And it's in the data. I'm not a hater. I've just been reporting data. I've been doing it using my legs rather than a test bench, which is perfectly valid. And when we put the bikes on test benches or when Velomotion do that, don't forget to check out their channel, you can see 
the, what I've been saying over the last year, particularly regarding to these uh, powerful motors, is absolutely correct. Because when we conclude this video, we can have a look back at this graph here, the power output. And I think what it shows you, which is one of the most interesting and important things, is how the motor makers can tune the motor curve. And this goes back to the very first video I said, where the whole DJI argument blew up. The motor power is a choice. It's not like you arrive at it through some magical experimentation. It's an actual choice. All of these curves on these motor output graphs can be decided upon. So whatever you brand are, in this case Marley, which I've tested quite extensively now, they have decided this is what we want and we want the motor to do this and they can do that. They can literally program it into the software and the mechanical design of the motor so that it gives you this type of curve. Right, hopefully that was an interesting uh, dive in. Go take a look at all of the uh, videos on Velomotion magazine EN, which is the English version on YouTube. Absolutely fantastic. I'll leave some links in the description below how to get it and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks everybody, bye.